I'm going to read from Luke chapter 1. That's uh, part of a story that's normally um, read out or spoken about at Christmas, but not only. And it's in Luke chapter 1, verse 39. This is after the appearance of Gabriel to, to Mary, saying she's going to have a child. Nothing is impossible with God. Uh, but it's after that, what happens next. <clears throat> and then verse 39 of Luke chapter 1. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered uh, Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed. It's the third time she says, blessed. Blessed is she who has believed that, uh, that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So three times blessed. And then it continues, something happened in Mary, and this is part of a song that we often do say in our churches. So she said, my soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my saviour, for he's been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He's performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He's brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. And so Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then she returned home. It's really that threefold blessing, not going to get into all the, uh, uh, there's not much you could say about this passage, but it's the, it's the blessing, it's a threefold blessing um, that uh, I just want to sort of pick up a little bit this morning. Uh, blessings, what are blessings? I think we just sort of often associate them with, you know, health, wealth, prosperity, abundance, you know, when everything's going well, you know, just, just that kind of, that's blessings. And uh, sometimes we associate it just with a kind of a anemic kind of word, you know, it's kind of the caricature of a TV um, comic uh, soap opera, you know, sort of this clergyman saying, oh, bless you, my son, you know, just kind of uh, not a lot of power in it, uh, just a little bit powerless. That's the caricature often presented. But uh, blessings, yeah, blessings can be, you know, we do thank God for all our blessings, all the goodness, the good things that do happen. Uh, in our lives, certainly. But often in the Bible, just been noticing, it's really blessings come at our deepest need. You know, it's not when everything's going smoothly. It's in our desperation sometimes, sometimes in our pain, sometimes in our uh, lack, when it's just hard to imagine the goodness of God, as we uh, read out from uh, Psalm uh, 13. You know, it's the how long, how long, how long bit often that somehow God breaks through with blessing. And so, I mean, just think about Mary, you know, we just kind of think, uh, you know, she, she, I guess she'd done this amazing thing. She'd um, received this angel and, and then good news and, and said, yes, be it unto me, you know, uh, as you have said. But um, was she, at this point, was she happy? Is my question. Was, it, was everything going well? Well, uh, clearly not. It does say she, was, she hurried to Elizabeth. You know, why did she hurry from her home uh, uh, town? Um, I, I don't really think she was waking up and saying, this was a beautiful day. <laughs> you know, the impact, and now she was, um, she was pregnant and, and an uh, unmarried mum in a very conservative culture. The hostility that would have uh, come her way, started to come her way as uh, folks started to uh, notice and, and just the feeling perhaps of being alone, you know, who's going to believe me and all the kind of conflicting emotions 
um, yes, said yes to God. Well, you know, that was a, a month or two ago, but now, now the questions come. You know, blessed, is she blessed? Did she feel blessed in this moment in her life? Uh, probably, probably not, to, to be very honest. Would others have said she was blessed? Definitely not. Uh, did she feel blessed? I would seriously doubt it, really. <laughs> because blessing, the, and, and yet, this was a moment, three times blessing. Isn't that interesting? In, in a kind of difficult place, when things weren't going smoothly, and she didn't see how it was all going to pan out, and just full of problems, existential problems, how was it all going to happen? This was the moment that God chose to bless her through Elizabeth. And if you just think for a moment, a few of the other kind of blessings in the Bible, um, you probably think of uh, Abraham. Abraham is mentioned in this song, isn't it? I will bless you and you'll be a blessing. All nations will be blessed uh, through you. Was it then plain sailing for Abraham? No, you read on, read on. You know, you had a couple of chapters later, he was battling, you know, someone had kidnapped his, his nephew and he had to go and fight some horrible, uh, hostile kings. He had problems in his family, you know, just the whole thing with Sarah and Hagar. And he sort of promised a son, yet wasn't happening, you know. Years gone, maybe a couple of decades have gone by. You know, he had, he had medical issues as well, you know, between them. Um, d did he feel blessed? Was he feeling blessed through, through this? Uh, probably a lot of the time he, he didn't. <laughs> Certainly he met God th through it all, you know, different points he, he met God. Um, but was it a bed of roses? It certainly wasn't. And by the end, what had he got in terms of the promised land? I think it was just a plot of land to bury his wife. That's all he had at the end. Was he blessed? Did he feel blessed? Well, he probably didn't most of those years. And yet God was, had said, I will bless you. I will bless you. And you can't see what's happening. But now we're still talking about him, you know, uh, however many thousands of years later. And even Mary mentions her in this kind of, this, uh, this poem. Jacob, remember him, you know, all his kind of to and froing, battling with Esau. He, he gets to the end of himself and, and someone appears. And, and that's the famous, by a brook, he says, I will not let you go till you bless me. You know, he is at the end of himself. You know, it's not plain sailing. He's not, you know, uh, everything is definitely not going smoothly. And so what was the blessing that, that God gave him through this angel? I will call you Israel, you know, from Jacob to Israel, the one who fought with God and won. Blessing? Is that a blessing? <laughs> and yet God kind of used that uh, in his life, and he, and he couldn't see it perhaps at that time, but God blessed him. And think of the Beatitudes, you know, blessed are those you're rich and you're healthy. doesn't say that, does it? Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the peacemakers. What does that mean? It means there's conflict. Blessed. Blessings in sometimes the most difficult uh, place. Ultimately, extreme example, but Lazarus, you know, he was seriously dead. And although there wasn't, doesn't use the word blessing, but in, in the words, the powerful words of Jesus to come out, uh, he, he, he came out and crossed a threshold from death to life, and he was blessed with new life. And I think that kind of ultimately sums up what uh, blessing is. Sometimes it's through the stuff of pain and grief and turmoil that the stuff of hope comes when the Lord blesses and new life is released. So what is blessing? It's the presence of God there somehow. The presence of God. It's the life of God that's doing something new and miraculous, dare I say. It's blessing is open hands to receive, you know, trusting that whatever God gives is good and is best. It might not be what I choose, but Lord, you want to bless me? I want to receive it. It's, a, what's a blessing? It's an invitation to respond to something new that the Lord would give. It, it awakens our imagination. It, uh, 
it sort of speaks a word, how things could be different. And, that, and that's what Mary, from Mary being blessed three times, what did she say? She said, wow, uh, you know, the humble uh, will be exalted, the, the rulers will come down. It's like something, something kind of changed in her. Her eyes were open to new possibilities. You know, it wasn't just a, a poor teenage a uh, woman kind of struggling with the existential stuff of, of, of trying to have a baby uh, in this kind of very conservative culture. Now, somehow, some spark happened in her, and her eyes were opened, and uh, you know, something amazing is going to happen. Don't see it, but somehow you're on the throne, and rulers are going to come tumbling down. The poor, the humble will be exalted. And she was able to say, the mighty one has done great things for me. My spirit rejoices in God, my saver, saviour. Somehow, in that blessing, threefold blessing, something changed in her. Do you, do you, do you agree? That kind of just came to, to light very recently. That's what blessing does. It opens our eyes, our spirit, to, to the presence of God, the life of God. A, a, a new possibility. It's, it's a blessing, it's a channel of God's grace. It doesn't fix us not some magical little touch, but our eyes are open to receive his grace, his help. And I notice this blessing comes in the midst of the ordinary. You know, it's all the, it's the dust and the getting ready for a, for a, for a, a birth and, and, and just sort of traveling from one place to another just to get a bit of solace and sanctuary. In the stuff of life, in the st ordinary stuff of life, God blesses. It's like the the sacred coming down and inhabiting the ordinary, and uh, in which every moment, any moment, any place can be infused with the life of God, the holy God at work in the ordinary stuff of life. And that's why I love, and, and, and you'll be aware of, uh, you know, Celtic blessings. They kind of blessed everything. You know, they blessed the, the, the pail of milk, they blessed the um, you know, meeting someone and going out the front door, everything was blessed. They blessed. And I think that was just it was so right. Every passage of time and season, blessed. And I've got a book at home, uh, Carmena, some, I think it's called Carmena. Carme, I, can't, I can't, sorry, I can't remember it. It's a book that thick anyway, of uh, Scottish blessings from the Hebridean Islands. Some of you might know it. I'll, I'll find the title. I just love it because every ordinary thing which we think is just ordinary, boring, tough, difficult, God, when God blesses, his life comes upon it and it can be different. It's something can shimmer with the mystery of God. It's the mystery of God doing something new and it kind of connects with our heart and we are touched even at the deepest place of our hearts and it becomes a thin place. A thin place, like, like a Kairos moment. This is the moment that, that God is doing something uh, new and different. And finally, I think, I think I must say, it can be something wild. <laughs> because when God blesses, it's not that anemic, oh, God bless you, my son, go in peace. You know, it's something wild and different and beyond our imaginations. That's what happened with Abraham. You know, go and leave a country and struggle for 20 years. And uh, I will show up, of course I'll show up, but I'm going to bless you beyond your imagination. Jacob too, and, and, and the Beatitudes that are so life-transforming. Blessed the poor in spirit, you know, that's wild, you know. In my poverty, that you can bless me with the kingdom of God. And that is the Lord. And I just, I just believe the Lord wants to bless you. You know, whatever you're going through, you know, and, and the turmoil and the stuff of life, let the, the, the beauty of the Lord, let the life of the, the Lord, let his voice speak something life-giving and transforming, that something can be different, maybe and not the way we expect, but his hand is on you. Mary was three times blessed in her desperate need, and her eyes were opened to new possibilities. So may the Lord bless you. I believe that's what he wants to do this morning. Receive a threefold blessing from the Lord.